For those of you that are part of the why movement, you know that your why story is a thing. I don't know how else to put it. Every introduction, every team building exercise, every podcast interview starts with how has the YMCA impacted your life? And we've heard some fantastic why stories so far on the accelerant. Although the story you're about to hear may be my all time favorite. Jeff Saunders is the vice president of storytelling and why experience for the YMCA of greater Cincinnati. Prior to working with Cincy, he spent years at the national office and his love for storytelling through video writing and just straight up caring for people is infectious. The best part though, is he took how the YMCA has changed his life and turned that into his life's mission. Quick heads up, you may be wanting to reset your life after this interview. Hope you enjoy. Well, we wanted to give ourselves a lot of grace because it has been a really, really rough year for America in a lot of ways. And so give yourself that grace, but it's time for us to get off the couch. It's time for us to not be stuck. And really, we're at the point where there's no more excuses. And don't get me wrong, I'm not shouting at you. I'm looking in the mirror right now. Like, it's time for us to get going. And what better organization than the Y, Daxco? You know, you've got partners with JCC. You know, all these people that are here to help people. And for us to take this and get off the couch and lead America to a better place. Accelerant, a substance used to aid the spread of fire, accelerating or causing acceleration. This is the Accelerant Podcast. Hi there. Thank you for joining me on the show today. I'm your host, Saranda West, and you are in for a treat. Actually, uh, we probably needed a timer because uh, I am about to introduce you to Jeff Saunders. He is the Vice President of Storytelling and the Y Experience at the YMCA of Greater Cincinnati. And pretty much every time we get on the phone, it seems like the minutes just tick by really quickly. So I can't wait for you to join this conversation. Jeff, welcome. Hey, thanks, Saranda, for having me and so excited to talk to you. I always love getting to talk to you and just connect and cool that we can do it this way. Yeah. So, Jeff, I have, first question, have to start out this way. Vice President of Storytelling, how in the world do you get a title like that? I, how, I, don't, I how still can don't I get know. one of those? That's amazing. Yeah, I still don't know, really. I, I think because I've always had a deep passion for, you know, even as a kid, right? I was like the ultimate movie buff. I can remember being at five and I was caring about Oscar winners. Maybe not that young, but I loved, loved, loved the power of story. And it really, that spark was found at a young age and it just kind of went with me my entire life and into my career. And to talk a little bit more deeper, is it okay if I share my wife's story? My Please wife, do. One I love to tell the most. So I was trying to impress a girl, which is really what any good movie starts off with, right? The girl that's the one, but yet you're in the friend zone. Um, you're stuck in the friend zone. And, you know, I wanted it. I wanted her to be the wife. And she, we were very close friends. And I just knew in my life I needed to be doing more, like physically, spiritually, mentally. I was growing a little bit, but I knew that I wanted it. If I was going to find an amazing girl like her to marry, I had to be the best me. And so I did something bold. I signed up for an Ironman. The only part I didn't really know too well was swimming. I knew how to bike pretty well, run pretty well throughout my life. And so I think, where am I going to learn how to do long distance swimming? And so, oh yeah, the YMCA has a pool. So I, I joined the Y, and at this point, Saranda, what I know about the Y is the village people saying about them. I know that they, uh, they're family-oriented, they're, they're kind of a mission or Christian, they used to be Christian organization or something, and, you know, so I, 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 didn't, really, I didn't really know a lot about it, and, and sadly, to this day, I think a lot of people kind of think the way that I think, you know, gym and swim, they kind of, they're for families, but they don't really understand the mission of the why. And I didn't at that time either. But thank goodness that the why that I joined was super mission driven and really helped me focus on all three areas of my life. Before I knew it, I was volunteering at the why. Mind you, I came in the guy that just had his earbuds in and didn't want anybody to talk to me while I worked out. Like I was your typical start off member at the why. And because wise mission, the wise mission and formula worked, it, 
it was like caring for me spiritually and mentally and physically. And then before long, I had background in an ad agency doing a lot of things nationally around, you know, storytelling, video production, that kind of thing. I'm like, man, the Y has the greatest story ever that I don't think a lot of people know about. I knew my friends and family didn't know the why that I was learning about. And I just kind of felt called uh, to, to call out to that association that the CEO at that uh, time was Jorge Perez. And he just led a very mission driven way that why should be. And before long, I ended up getting work with them to do stories for them as a vendor. And then it wasn't long after that, I was ad, asked to be their head of marketing communications. And so with a video focus. And so that went from storytelling there. And then I ended up taking that ability to the national office for five years, incredible job. Got to be with all these wise across the country, help them film their stories. And uh, now to Cincinnati where I'm, I'm doing both the uh, storytelling and member experience combined. And so I think that's how you get to that place. I think you that's how you get to that title. I still don't know how I got such a, a, a cool amazing job, but I, I love every minute of it. I love it. But, but hold on, go back to the first part of your story. Did you get the girl? Oh, got, yes. Married, two boys. I forgot to tell the <laughs> amazing ending. Yeah. So, and, and in fact, the race was in Branson, Missouri, and our oldest son, his name's Branson. So um, yeah, the why was instrumental in transforming my life inside and out, but just being one of the greatest blessings i I've ever had. So big believer in the why and, and is, telling its story. That is fantastic. You know, the, the village people piece, if I could share a quick story myself, my family and I were at over the holidays, took a quick trip. We were at a new year's Eve party and they played, of course, the YMCA song. And I looked at all three of my kids, of course, from having worked with wise for so long. I was like, do you know this song? <laughs> do you know what it is? And they're like, Yes, I know this song. I was like, do you know what it actually means? And do you know what the YMCA actually represents? And they looked at me, of course, rolled their eyes, but I was like, it's an opportunity. Good job, village people. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, amazing, catchy song. But unfortunately, I don't think it, people get really what the heart of the why, what we're trying to do. And I mean, you know, whatever. It's it's a it's a great, a great song, but I um, the why is so much more than just that song. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing your story. I love that you get to now turn it into what, what you love to do is, is tell the story of the why. What about the other part of your role, which is the why experience? Help me understand that a little bit more. Yeah, so at my time at YUSA and some of the colleagues that I worked with at that point, they were dealing at a high level with research and data and around member experience. And some of the things that we were learning were well, one, we were trying to figure out when we say transformed life, we want to help you get strong in spirit, mind, and body. That's actually extremely tough to measure, right? Holistic change. And so through a lot of research and, and, and findings, we found that there's nine well-being attributes that we all need. Um, you know, this comes to Maslow's hierarchy of needs of what we need as people to survive. And the leadership at the YUSA at that time said, well, what if we were to pinpoint three, that if we could do three really well, because really the nine all sync up to what the Y is trying to do every day. But if we had three, what would those three be? And so they were around three things, achievement, but not just hitting your hundred pounds of benching or losing 10 pounds. Why that could be your achievement. We're talking about all of life's achievements, learning your first swim lesson, reading your first book a senior that's it's coming to a class for the first time after 10 years of um, not being able to move. What, you know, me and you, right? Our, our marriage, our, our first kid, graduating college. Like when you achieve, you grow inside and out. There's a lot that happens to us as people uh, when we're achieving. And that's why when we don't have goals in our life and we're just kind of stuck, we're stuck and we can feel it. You know, that's probably what COVID has done the most to us is we just feel stuck. We don't feel like we're growing right now. And so that's the first one, achievement. And I see the why, the hook of being bringing people in is that achievement piece. Like we'll help you with your goals. People want that. The second thing that the why does, it's really important in growth and spirit, mind, body is relationships. So we want people to connect. 
we actually are measuring here in Cincinnati how people are connecting with others. If they're not connecting with friends, we feel like the goals part is not enough. They have to be in connection, whether it's even if it's at home with their family, what are ways that we can get people to connect? And the third one, the most important one, and I think most wise would be interested in learning more how we measure this, but belonging. Like we want not only for them to move into the connection relation stage, but them to ultimately get to that point where they say the why is our family. I, I wanna give to the why. I wanna volunteer for the why. I wanna be a maven and shout to the rooftops like my crazy, crazy <laughs> self does with like, I can't stop talking about it. And so how do we get them into that belonging space? And so when I talk about the why experience, everything I do in trainings and tools and videos comes through that filter. How are we helping our staff be equipped to not only have it in their own lives to achieve a relation of belonging, but also to deliver that to their YMCA, to their members. And we're just thrilled with the results. I mean, we've seen Ys that were relatively flat for years. They're growing now. And it's really because of this strategy, which is exciting. With those three different pieces, so you've got achievement, relationship, belonging. Are those sequential typically for a member? Just like your story, right? In terms of you came in, you had a goal, then you, like, it, does it kind of tend to progress that way? Do you see it as a progression? Yeah, that's a great point. I think that the ABR can be changed to BAR or can be changed to ARB or ARB. I mean, we've, we've kidded about that locally at our association. But if you were to ask the normal, typical uh, timeline, it really is like people come in, they're focused on their, we want to get them focused on their goals. That's kind of where we want to first land. That gets them excited transactionally. So we can't miss out the transactional sell part of the why, like all the great equipment we have to help you with your goals, et cetera. People come to us with a transactional mindset. But when you start getting into transformational is when you get to the next two places. When they get into connection with others at the why and we're getting them to connect with friends, and, and feel that connection point, th then you can move to the last part, right? Where they're, see they're feeling so connected through their goals and through their friends. They now feel like they're, they can't go to a, another gym, even though I can't stand that word when you associate it with the why, but I get it. They're going into that special place, right? That member that knows everybody's name when he walks in and we know them. The member that is the first to jump in line to say, I'll provide shoes to that shoe drive you just put up. I mean, we have a small portion, like a 5% that we can really count on. It might be more, more you know, different wise. That's, that's about the average or guesstimate, I'd say. But how do we move that to 50%? How do we maybe get to the why? What it originally was, was a lot more volunteer driven, you know, where, where we have volunteers helping this, especially in these times of COVID and how thin our staff are. So it is sequential to your point. It, it, it can be a little bit altered, but most of the time it's, it's that timeline. Perfect. And then you actually mentioned COVID. So looking back, especially on the belonging and the relationship piece, I think that's what a lot of us have been missing over this past year as we've been to quarantines and different things. So how have you seen the why come together to support the community over the past nine months or so? Yeah, so it's obviously been very tricky on how we do this. I'd say my role really shifted when COVID happened into full storytelling mode. Like I needed to get the message of the why and all we were doing, pandemic childcare, senior assistance. And we basically said, stay with us was our tagline, hashtag stay with us. And really it was just kind of letting our members know like you're heroes in this work with your membership. Like you are, it was never about the why, even though the why did a lot of work, our message was you're the hero. And I thought that was a good front to take and, and it really showed the McKinsey Scott, which some other wise saw come through. That was a huge gift and a blessing. We were able to be, to take part in that, but also we saw how much money we raised last, last year was just unbelievable. And that was super helpful for us financially too. So storytelling came into play, but then eventually it was kind of like, okay, we've been able to tell some good stories. How do we keep these members from not canceling? Because you can only tell a good story so long, you got to have like literally a product or, or something tangible for them to have. And so then we started developing these virtual challenges, which it's amazing to see the relationships that are starting and happening in this space and how the why 
can do a, a fitness challenge that really does get them to connect in relationships and belonging because we're not seeing each other, but we can do some things virtually. And right now, virtually is good rather than texting your family. How do I call or video chat them? So two fronts, one is amped up storytelling significantly with COVID and that really helped, but now we're looking at innovative ways to connect members um, virtually to end up coming back to the buildings. Can you give us a little bit of a timeline specifically for Scentsy and that community? What does it look like today in terms of facilities being open and, and just what you're able to offer right now? Yeah, so right now we are still limited capacity. We have a mask requirement that everyone has to wear a mask while they're working out. That's definitely been, I think, good to a lot of people, but it can be real tricky at times too, politically. Not a lot of our programs, so that really hurts. So a lot of our youth programming has decreased and we're starting to get back light, especially as we look at the spring and being outdoors limited classes for swim. So our programming has been hit quite a bit, you know, and people are just, I hate to say it, people just don't want to come right now. And my parents are great examples. They love their why. I've, I convinced them to be why members. They were Planet Fitness for forever. And I finally get them to go. And now they, they loved it. But you couldn't give them, you know, $500 at the door. They just don't want to come. And it's nothing against the why. It's just, I can't. So we we have to be innovative about how we connect with them virtually. So I officially have signed up for the Reset Challenge and awesome. can't wait. So, and talk us through just a little bit. You, you gave me a little bit of a preview, but it's going to be a six-week challenge. Six, yeah, yeah, six weeks. And we'll, we keep it similar to what the success of the Strong Challenge. That's what we did in the fall. Uh, we, we announced at the very beginning a, a group goal that we're all going to do together. And I'm not sharing with that with you over this call. You, you are going to be surprised just like everybody else on Monday. But it's a goal that's going to be helping us move together, really. It's going to help us get off the couch and move together. But we keep that goal simple because we don't want to overcomplicate it. We want to make sure everybody feels involved and that they can do it. And then the, the weeks after that, are one, the next week's a lot of focus on nutrition. What, should, what kind of fuel should we be putting in our body? And we'll do that as a community. We're going to grow in that space together. And then week three is all about relationships. Week four is about play and having fun. And then we need to be doing that in our lives. Week five is around reinvesting, as I mentioned. And then week six is called restored. So week six is always in our challenge, how we bring it all together and how we learn that this isn't a challenge. This is an everyday life thing. And we're going to keep going moving forward after the challenge. So Hopefully that gives you enough preview, but I'm not giving you that first week. Sorry. Okay, fine. It can it can stay a secret, <laughs> but I but I am so excited because Jeff, I am with you. I am one of those people when you know New Year's came around and it's typically this like exciting time. And me personally, I've always set goals. I'm gonna you know I'm a runner, so like I'm gonna run this race. Of course, there's no races happening. Like it just it fell flat. I've been so discouraged, like really having a hard time just getting motivated again for this year. And so I'm looking forward to the reset challenge. I think it'll, it'll definitely help. Yes, yeah, Serena. And we're, and we're honestly seeing that with our numbers, unfortunately. I mean, our numbers are really good, but I'm, we set a goal for 50,000, but I'm kind of going like, why don't we have 5 million? Like that's where my mind is. And I just think this year is different. I think the, the frustration that's, I think we're kind of almost in a all light depression or mid depression right now because of where we're at and that things haven't changed and it's just been tough. And so I hope more and more people sign up because the people that do it and really stick with it, it's gonna be exactly what you said because I've been the same way, right? Like in this slump and, and usually I'm like, all right, it's new year, let's go. And I'm just kind of like, meh, <laughs> I'm gonna just keep watching Netflix. I'm gonna eat this crap, crappy food or not like bad, food that's bad for me. Uh, because it's, you know, it comforts me in that 30 minutes of comfort, but okay. I think we need it. And I'm hopeful that uh, I'm excited. You're going to do it with us. It's so cool. And I invite all you, anybody listening, here's my plug. It's 
844-889-6222. Write that number down one more time, 844-889-6222. It's for anybody to join, just text RESET to that number. Text the word RESET, R-E-S-E-T. It's almost like the Aretha Franklin song, just when you say it like that. The R-E-S-P-C-T, nope, it's R-E-S-E-T. And you text reset and I will respect you a lot if you do that. Yeah. I, I hope any, every, everybody can join. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely. And no matter when you're listening to this, even if we're on week three, you can still join. So don't let that hinder you, even if you didn't get in that first week. And so Jeff, so this is the reset challenge that's <clears throat> going to take for the next six weeks or so, but I know how you plan. You're already planning for what's coming after that. How do you see this these virtual challenges, this new way of reaching the community, how do you, where do you see it going next? Yeah, thank you for asking that. So the next challenge is going to be over the summer. It's going to be a very family focused challenge because wise really need to engage their families right now. We're having some struggles there and re-engaging them back into our mission. And so the idea, I haven't named it fully yet. I think I was around best summer ever, which is a famous tagline for wise. But really, I'm leaning to, into this idea of spark. And by spark, that's a youth development term of helping kids find their passion, helping kids find like what makes them tick. As a parent, and you know, we spend lots of money through programs we probably didn't need to sign up for to get kids to just really trying to help find their passion. And so the idea of that challenge is to introduce some ideas um, a, around karate or you know, different programs and basically letting them have a taste of it, letting them just try the waters and, and hopefully families can see something within their group, their family group that, man, our, our little son or, or daughter is leaning into this. And how do I at, use the why to help them explore that more? And so I'm really excited about that. And then the fall will be strong 2.0. I know I'm excited to be working with Daxco on what that potentially looks like. I mean, we want to keep growing those numbers, but the main thing is that they're staying engaged throughout the challenge. Like we get the big numbers, but how do we keep people hooked in for six weeks? It's actually a lot tougher than you think, especially when you're trying to get people to do fitness goals. I mean, wow, I was never in that space before where it's trying to keep people committed. I now know what personal trainers and those folks deal with on a regular basis. It's tough. And so excited to learn about how we can improve this uh, in the fall to make it truly keep people in uh, the whole six weeks. Yeah, that's a great plan, especially with the the kids piece. I know as a parent, like that, they are struggling just like all of, like the rest as adults, right? And I was actually reflecting my my youngest is six, and now at this point, six of his life has been this pandemic, and most that's what he remembers right now, especially with where he is, and it's just a it's a hard time for them too. So helping them find even an opportunity for them to find their passion amidst this time, right? Um, that's perfect. Yeah, exactly what you said. And I actually can't take credit for this. This was my wife's idea. I was leaning more towards just fun over the summer with kids and family and activities, but she's really concerned right now about their development. And, you know, I am too. Uh, they're not doing the soccer programs they once were. They're, they're going to be behind. And so how can the why get them caught up? You know, an achievement gap, type idea or concept for achievement, you know, not just school, but like the programs in their life, we want them to find their passion for and then to feel like a kid and not just a screen watching. Oh, we're talking about the virus again. I have to wear a mask at school. This is my new life. Like, no, we have to do more and the why needs to do more. And so I'm excited for what the summer program will look like. Hello. I'd like to interrupt this podcast to introduce myself. I'm Constance Miller, Director of Research Analytics and Insights at Dexco. That means my job is to surface actionable insights to help all we work with make the most informed decisions possible to drive success. We thought the Accelerant Podcast would be an ideal opportunity to link the stories you're listening to from amazing people all across the country and add data to deepen the takeaways. So here we are in the Quant Corner, where numbers and data tell beautiful stories. To echo Serena's sentiment on being a favorite, this episode is near and dear to my heart on both a personal and professional level. 
I am honored to have contributed to the achievement, relationship, and belonging research and resulting data that Jeff discussed during my role at YUSA prior to joining DAXCO. So I'm going to make an atypical data observation this week with a lightweight research recommendation instead of data findings. To keep a pulse on the trends that Jeff is speaking to, I highly recommend searching online for Strong Challenge YMCA to not only see just how many Ys are participating in the challenge, which to jump to an answer is a lot, but very helpful insight into how each Y is talking about the challenge's value and impact to and with their members and the community. A second trend recommendation to search for is developmental assets by the Search Institute. Developmental assets are a long-standing youth development resource used by WISE, and Greater Cincinnati has harnessed a powerful message around achievement, relationships, and belonging that they're using to drive their family programming that Jeff described in this episode. Last but not least, check in with any of the monthly insights and impact reports to follow program registration trends for associations like yours. As always, thank you for letting me jump in and happy researching. Jeff, with all of these challenges and you helping to coordinate and, and motivate all these people, how do you stay healthy yourself during this time? That's a good question. So once reset starts, I really will do the challenge. And I work really hard on the front end to allow myself this time. I might document a little video or photo here and share it on the community group, but I'm going to be intentional about blocking my time and, and avoiding the meetings. And thank goodness I have a CEO that supports that. And, and he'll support that for all his staff because he knows how deeply we all need this. If I'm not taking care of myself, I can't do what I need to do. And so I am, I'm always a little, I've gotten pretty comfortable being lazy on the couch at night and eating, watching Netflix and the office for like the 20th season in a row, watching my office show. But like I said, I, I, I have to do deeper care for myself and this will be it. Perfect. So for all of the people listening, we've, we've referenced several different things in terms of the challenges and even your role. For those that want to learn more, where can they go find more information, whether it's the, the Cincy Y or you personally? Yeah, great question. Thanks, Serena. So if you go to stronglife.org, so that's our new website that basically umbrella, the umbrella for all of our challenges, podcasts, um, this is where the wise that have joined us, we've got one website we're working off together. You can visit and see what the challenge looks like there. But if you're interested in getting more involved, your YMCA wants to do more of this, or you want to be a sponsor, or you're interested at all in supporting this work, just reach out to strong support at myy.org. We've connected a lot of wise into this. We'd love to help you out. And we're really doing this work together and it's exciting. Fantastic. So Jeff, knowing where we all may be personally or in our careers, do you have any final words or ad advice for those listening in? Yeah, I, I, I feel like I've always been that guy that understands the vibe of people, right? So that's one of my, my secret weapons of being a good storytelling is I, I have producer instincts of knowing what people are feeling right now and, and what's the story I need to tell we need to know, well, we wanted to give ourselves a lot of grace because it has been a really, really rough year for America yeah. in a lot of ways. And so give yourself that grace, but it's time for us to get off the couch. It's time for us to not be stuck. And really, we're at the point where there's no more excuses. And don't get me wrong. I'm not shouting at you. I'm looking in the mirror right now. Like, it's time for us to get going. And what better organization than the Y, DAXCO, I know you've got partners with JCC, you know, all these people that are here to help people and for us to take this and get off the couch and lead America to a better place. And uh, it starts with us. And I would say that's the number one thing the wise are saying is it helped me be from the defensive back to the offensive in my life with my why work. And that's why they keep doing it. And so if you want to get off the defensive and be, stop being so stuck, Join Reset or join Strong Life, the overall initiative. I know it will help you. 
Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for your time. This has been fantastic. Uh, Serena, you're so nice and just so kind. I just love talking to you every time we get to talk and can't wait to do reset together with you. We're going to get back into those runs. We're going to get back into uh, being the best for our families and uh, you're a blessing to the Y and thanks for all you do work-wise. We appreciate you. Thank you. Let's do it. All right. Thanks so much for listening to the latest episode of The Accelerant. As always, this is about inspiring you and me. Okay, all of us. Let us know what you've learned, what you want to hear, or any other thoughts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Daxco. That's at D-A-X-K-O or post with hashtag Accelerant Podcast. Or you can send us an email at podcast at Daxco.com. We would love to hear from you. You can find Accelerant wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember to hit subscribe. That simple click helps us continue to bring new episodes packed with uplifting and insightful stories. Bonus points if you leave a review. Let other listeners know about us and what Accelerant means to you. Accelerant Podcast is a product of Daxco, serving the health and wellness community for over 20 years with comprehensive technology solutions to over 17 million members worldwide. Learn more at Daxco.com. That's D-A-X-K-O.com. Accelerant is produced by Christy Brown, Sean Ellis Hussey, and me, Saranda West. Sound and editing by Sean Ellis Hussey. Visual design by Jenny Miller. 